Thanks for clicking on this video. My name is Justin. I am a landscape astrophotographer. And if you're looking to bump up the quality of your Milky Way photography, this video is for you. Today we are going to be going over what's called mosaics, which is combining multiple single shot images into one image to create a more crisp, high quality, more high resolution image. It is very similar to a panorama, but instead of typically one row for what you would traditionally think of as a panorama, it would normally be like multiple rows, like let's say four by four or four by five. So that is essentially a mosaic. So today we are actually out here at Big Sable Lighthouse. I have about a 1.5 mile hike over to the lighthouse and I am praying for clear skies right now. It is looking about 50% clear at the moment. Hopefully the clouds do uh, go away by the time it is time to get shooting for night. Right now we have, I think about two hours until blue hour where we are gonna go focus on getting a northern perspective of the lighthouse to shoot the northern mosaic of the Milky Way. And then we are gonna get a southern shot of the Milky Way core uh, first before uh, the core sets, hopefully, because it is early, middle October, and we don't have much time before that core sets, especially at my latitude here, which is about 45 and a half degrees. So let's get moving over to the lighthouse. Awesome, so step number one, and planning for your mosaic Milky Way image would be to pre-plan where you want to shoot in the first place. You would use resources like lightpollutionmap.info to find the darkest skies near you and to gain some practice. I would shoot in Bortle class four areas just to kind of get the hang of how to do it. And then once you're really ready and feel confident, I would travel to a Bortle class two or darker. Three, you can get some phenomenal images, but if you live relatively close to a two or darker, you're gonna get some stunning shots, especially with the details of a mosaic image. Other resources would be like typical Google Maps or photo pills. If you aren't using photo pills or Planet Pro, those are the two best photography planning apps, especially for nighttime photography. So let's go check out this phenomenal light right now. Woo wee, look at this sunset. But step number two would be to get out to your location that you have decided on to pre-plan your shot and make sure that what you thought in your head is gonna work out. And what you can do is you can use the PhotoPills night AR mode like so to make sure that the shot that you're envisioning you can create in your mosaic. All right, on to step number three of shooting your Milky Way mosaic would be to choose your focal length you want to use. Personally, I would recommend starting with something like a 35 millimeter. It's not really wide, it's not super tight in, it is great to practice. Personally, I love shooting at 50 millimeter for my mosaics and even multi-row panoramas. So, uh, as you can see, we are now at sunset and it was a gorgeous sunset. The sun is just behind this little band of clouds here and I could not be more excited to get shooting on these shots tonight. Okay, so I'm now shooting on a 50 millimeter. So you can see just how tight in I am on this 50 millimeter. So I am gonna have to do, as you can see for my whole foreground, several rows and columns for my foreground. I overall think that shooting in portrait orientation is the best way to shoot your mosaics and panoramas. It really just depends on the framing of your particular pano or mosaic. So step number four is gonna be thinking how you're gonna compose your overall image. You can use programs like Stellarium and input your sensor size and you can plan out how many rows and how much overlap you need for each shot. Personally, I recommend at least 30% overlap between each image. I personally take it safe and try to shoot about 50% overlap. I don't care if I'm overshooting, if I accidentally get trailing in one image, more than likely I can just take out that particular image 
and uh, completely not use it. So uh, right now we are going to get going on the foreground for my northern Milky Way image. We are approaching blue hour here shortly and I want to get started on the foreground before, if you can see back here, there is a white light uh, back there. This particular lighthouse has two absolutely awful lights that blow out the foreground. One light is that white light back there. Another light is this yellow light that's right here. It's not on. And if it doesn't turn on, I'm gonna be super happy because it is awful and it throws off the color balance for everything. So I'm gonna enjoy the last remaining bits of this sunset here and get on to shooting the foreground for the, pan the mosaic. Alright, lovely. To show you what I did, I'm now on my 50 millimeter. I used portrait orientation, just like I was saying, and I started here at the top, so my shot looked like this, except portrait orientation, and I went across here because I knew that this tip of the lighthouse was going to be the highest point of my foreground. So I started up here, took a shot here, and went all the way across because I was getting some of the top of the lighthouse in there and this flagpole, so I went all the way across here to about here and I stopped at like the middle of this hill right here and then I dropped down about 50% went all the way back across to about here dropped down went all the way across here and since I'm at 50 millimeter I just happened to be shooting at f4 I also focused on the immediate foreground in the same row of pictures just to, to create a focus stack and I went all the way back across but focused on the closer foreground area so I will put those, uh, the bottom single row together and focus stack those together to create a sharp image from front to back. So this side is done. Now I'm gonna go back to the other spot and start taking the blue hour photos there. So now we are all done with the foreground shots for both our south facing direction and our northern facing direction. So now I'm going to do a quick time lapse to going from uh, twilight into darkness and I hope I'm able to pull that off. Once darkness occurs, I'm going to go down to the beach to get the southern portion of the Milky Way. If I can just eliminate having the lighthouse in the way so I can just slip in the Milky Way right behind the lighthouse and post later. I think that's a lot easier to do and it's the same sky from the exact same location so I'm fine with that. And I think I'm going to be doing a six by four row so each shot is going to be 60 seconds to 90 seconds hopefully. And that means that if each shot is six minutes, I'm gonna do six by four. So that should take me roughly 30 minutes to complete my mosaic. I'm gonna throw up a shot right here of my latest mosaic of the Northern uh, Milky Way. And I think it was a, f it was an 18 shot mosaic and I think it was four rows of four or five. I don't remember exactly, but I hope you enjoy this image right here. So I just wanted to show you just how bad the lighthouse lights are. The guests are over there behind the lighthouse actually having a fire right now. Um, they are volunteers to maintain the lighthouse which is really cool. But they have all the lights inside the lighthouse and front porch on which is right here. And then that white light that I was talking about is right there. And luckily that yellow light is not on so that's pretty cool. So I'm off to find a good vantage point that gets away from the lights to shoot the Milky Way. Here we are. That's all light pollution way out there. Look at those nice stars. Let's go. So remember, just like with panoramas for mosaics, you wanna make sure that your tripod is level. This is a little bubble level right here. And this is my base for my tracker. There's also a bubble level on top to make sure that it is level. So make sure when setting up your tripod and everything is leveled so you can pan in every direction. All right, so fourth time's a charm. I am all finished with the southern portion of the Milky Way here. 
I opted to doing an eight panel by four row mosaic. So it did take me a little bit longer than I expected. And not only that, I ran into several different issues. I had to reshoot the fourth top row twice. My focus got off. I needed to break the dew heater out and I had one frame that would not track correctly uh, and it took me five tries to get it to get perfect. So without further ado, let's move on to the southern portion of the Milky Way. Okay, it really pays to have patience, especially with things dealing with multiple images to create one huge one. Mosaics and panoramas a lot of little things can go wrong and when graduating up to medium focal lengths like 35, 50, 85, it, you need a lot of patience to make sure that you're going to end up with a quality product. It probably took me 45 minutes because my tracker would just not track correctly. It was super frustrating and finally it started working and I ended up getting this absolutely super wide uh, mosaic. So I don't remember how many rows, I'm pretty sure it's four rows, but I don't remember how many images was for each row because I just kept having to start over and, and do all the stupid stuff. But it definitely pays to have patience and I can't wait to show you this final image of the Northern Milky Way with the Blue Hour blend. I'm gonna put right here on the screen uh, the photo pills of the kind of time that I'm aiming for to represent for the Blue Hour photo. And I'm also gonna put here the amount of frames per row that I had as well. But I am super duper cold and I'm gonna pack up and head back to the car because it is, you know, that mile and a half walk back. And I hope to see you guys in part two where I actually put everything together, but no promises on that. But thank you so much for watching this video and I look forward to seeing your mosaics. And if you find this video and this inspires you to do a panorama or a mosaic image for the Milky Way, please tag me on Facebook or Instagram at JMNatureScapes. Thanks for watching the video.